Hey, this is Mike from The Run Testers, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about this watch, the Garmin Forerunner 965. Now, myself, Nick, and Jane have all been living with Garmin's latest top-end Forerunner watch. Hopefully you know the drill by now. We'll take you through what's new on the Forerunner 965 and how it compares to the 955. Then we'll get into our good and bad that we found living with this watch and give you our verdict on whether we think you should buy the Garmin 4 and a 965 and whether this is a great running watch to own. Okay, so let's get into those differences and we'll start with the design first. And ultimately the things that kind of really stand out about the 965 against the 955 First and foremost is the fact that you are getting changes in the bezel material. So in the 965, you are getting a titanium bezel, which obviously gives you something a little bit nicer looking, but also manages to keep the um, the weight down of the watch as well. So it's the same, roughly the same weight as the 955. Whereas the 955 has a polymer bezel uh, in comparison. You've got similar style straps. The case sizes have changed slightly different. You're getting a slightly larger case on the 965, but not by a huge amount. Thickness wise, the 965 is a little bit slimmer as well, though the weight in general is about the same in terms of what you're getting here. You are not getting a solar powered option on the 965, whereas you did have on the 955. And interestingly, the pricing of the 965 compared to the 95 solar is pretty similar. The 955 without the solar is definitely cheaper than the 965, but the solar version is roughly around the same price as the 965. Other things to probably note in is that you are getting the same level of storage. So 32 gigabytes of storage on both of these watches. So that gives you the same amount of storage to kind of download your apps, um, store your music, and obviously kind of um, facilitate having those kind of mapping, those kind of richer topo and road and trail maps that are preloaded on here as well. You're getting the same level of waterproofing. So the designer point of view, the key things I would say is that you're obviously getting that AMOLED display, uh, which is still touchscreen. Um, you are getting a slightly larger case. You're getting a thinner, um, slimmer case size in general. You are getting that titanium bezel as well. So those are kind of the key differences from a design point of view. Okay, so then we get into the differences in terms of the features. Ultimately, everything you get on the 955 is on the 965. There's very few extras in terms of what you're getting on the 965 compared to the 955. All the same sensors, all the same kind of modes, all the same kind of level of analysis and um, training features as well. Things mainly we've managed to spot is that you are now getting some of the advanced running dynamics that you would usually rely on having an additional accessory to deliver. You can now get on the watch. There's a few more of those that you can kind of access without using an additional sensor. From a navigation point of view, it's all very similar apart from the kind of next fork navigation um, mode that you're getting added to on the 965. And then there's also a cardio workout mode as well here, if that's something that you want to do. But ultimately, in terms of the features, everything you got on the 955 is on the 965, plus those kind of small extras that we've spoken about as well. So yeah, differences wise in the feature set, not a huge amount. And then we get into battery life, which I think is one of the key kind of differences between the 965 and the 955 and 955 Solar. So I've pulled out some stats, I think really give you a sense of where these two watches differ in terms of those level of battery performances in terms of the different modes. So from a smartwatch perspective, you're actually getting more day to day from the 4965, but if you use the uh, watch in always on display mode, you will get up to seven days, and that's what Garmin is promising. Where obviously you don't have to kind of factor that in with the 4955 because it doesn't have an AMOLED display. Now we're seeing some differences in terms of the kind of kind of normal GPS mode, the multi-band um, GPS mode, and also ultra track mode as well, where you're seeing some drop-offs on the 965 compared to the 955. But ultimately, there's some wins and some gains going for the 965 over the 955 in the battery department but it looks like ultimately that you are gonna still get a good battery life um, performance in general in most of the kind of scenarios that you would use a 965, but there are some differences and there are some drop-offs when you look at those kind of raw numbers and those kind of stated numbers by Garmin as well. So my first like for the 965 is the design. Obviously, 
big part of that is the screen, but it's not just the screen. I really like what Garmin has done in general to the watch to improve the design compared to past uh, 4 and a 9 X5 range watches. You've got that little titanium bezel. It's not the big chunky bezel of things like the Phoenix and the Epix. And in general, there's less metal on the watch overall, but it makes it look quite a lot nicer, in my opinion, while retaining the really lightweight, svelte look and feel of the Forerunner's uh, range, which is obviously very nice to wear day-to-day -to, -day to have such a lightweight watch on your wrist. It's also just that little bit thinner and I think more streamlined than the 955. So I do think it's a really big design upgrade, a bigger one than I expected when I was just looking at the specs for the watch. And then obviously the screen is fantastic. It's, it's a really bright AMOLED display. It's a joy to use uh, throughout your runs and outside of runs as well. It's especially bright in dapple conditions or cloudy conditions or when you're indoors. So here in the UK, it's an absolutely brilliant watch. Um, I think if you are gonna spend your whole time out in blazing sunshine and wearing sunglasses, then it's a bit tighter between the display of this and a classic memory and pixel display on the Garmin watches, which are just as clear in bright sunlight, maybe slightly more clear, but the rest of the time, the AMOLED is certainly more clear and easy to read for me. And outside of running, it's just a really nice thing to have on a watch, that big bright display. Other like is a big surprise to me is the battery life. Now, obviously it's not amazing on this watch, but it's better than I expected. It's really very good for such a bright AMOLED display. This has been lasting me consistently six or seven days on a charge. And that's with the always on screen enabled, uh, multi-band GPS enabled at all times during my runs, notifications coming into the watch. And I've been running probably about 80 or 90K in that time with a couple of indoor workouts as well. It's given the display you've got here, the size of the watch, the lightweight nature of the watch, that's really quite good battery life for an AMOLED screen. It makes the decision about whether to go for an AMOLED screen a little bit easier in my mind. It's also you know, only a couple of days less than I was getting from the Garmin 4 on a 955 Solar, which is really unexpected to me, uh, given that obviously that has that memory and pixel display and the solar panels. So yeah, it's not a huge drop off in battery life to the normal 955. It is a drop off, certainly a noticeable drop off, but not as big as I expect it to be. If you're a triathlete who's doing a lot of cycling as well as running and using GPS a lot harder, then you are gonna charge it a lot more than I will, just as a, just as a a runner and you can still get much bigger battery lives from other Garmin watches or Coros watches but given the package you're getting here six seven days of battery life for that screen is very impressive. For my third like I could pick off a load of different Garmin features that are on this watch that are really good but they're equally good on lots of other watches I'm talking about things like multi-band GPS the mapping features on this watch the uh, training analysis for training readiness I've not really been that enamored of the new um, training load ratio feature they've got here between your chronic and acute load it's, it's not that intuitively presented on the watch uh, for what is quite a simple idea like don't suddenly change the massive amount of your training a massive amount but I think what really stands out in terms of training analysis is definitely the readiness feature which just boils down a lot of data into one place, gives you a nice clear thing you can use to guide your training each day with the usual caveats that, you know, if your sleep isn't that accurately tracked, you might not get the most accurate readiness rating, but more importantly, I think if you are gonna look at those training readiness stats, you need to use a heart rate sensor to get the best data into the watch from your workouts to help it judge how hard you've been working and how much time you need to recover. So the first thing I'm gonna pick for my things I love about the 965 is the screen. I'm sure we're all gonna pick this. I'm sure you've noticed I'm in a horribly lit room. It's like 8 p.m. and it's going dark outside. But look how bright this screen is. It's just amazing. And I think it is the first thing you notice when you get, to be honest, it's the main difference between the 955 and it's the first thing you notice. It's, it is really bright. It's kind of like the screen of the epics onto the 965. It's got 454 by 454 pixels, the 955 has 260 by 260. So it is just, it is so bright and it does really make a difference. I think it feels more premium when you're using it as a smartwatch and it just is brighter when you're on the run. I think I've done runs, I did a lot of testing when I first did my video on this watch where I was running with my Phoenix and even though the Phoenix is technically Garmin's kind of more premium advanced watch, the 965 of the brighter screen just gives it something else and it does when you have them side by side this feels kind of better just because it is brighter it's easy to see that said you obviously you've lost some of the solar charging but to be honest i think i'm never the kind of runner that's going to go on a multi-day adventure with my watch i might go abroad and do a marathon but i'm still more than happy to charge my watch once a week and you're going to be able to do that with this but i think the screen really is its main selling point and it is it is worth shouting about as something i really love about the watch and the last thing i like which i'm sure this is predictable it's the battery life i mean you can't go wrong with garmin's battery life and the 965 despite having the brighter screen i think still has a really impressive battery life it will last you 28 days in smartwatch mode 
31 hours in GPS mode without music and eight and a half hours on GPS mode with music. So really that's enough to do a marathon with your watch, get to the start, listen to music from it, finish, and still have a little bit of charge to kind of look at your stats afterwards, which is really good considering it has such a bright screen. I think we've kind of, this watch still has the battery life we know and expect and love from Garmin, despite having a brighter screen. Okay, so let's start with the good, and I would say the first good thing is I do like the fact that there is an AMOLED display on the 41965 compared to the 955. I just think it generally just elevates the experience of using it as a watch day to day and when you're running. Um, I think, you know, there are going to be some advantages and disadvantages over using or having a transvective kind of display in comparison to the AMOLED display, mainly in that kind of bright outdoor uh, light. And I do think, um, for me personally, I haven't seen a massive issue with that in my kind of testing. I think the visibility has been absolutely fine. You can adjust the brightness as well if that is a, an issue for it. You know, you will get prompted that will affect the battery life. I don't think you do have that option, but I haven't really had to do that um generally in my time so i think for me it's a positive thing to have that amoled display it's not going to be for everyone but i think if you like something that feels a little bit more like a smartwatch, um and elevates features like that kind of mapping um just in general kind of interacting with the kind of notifications i think you know going through your feeds um and like things like music features as well if that's something you use i think it just makes it a lot nicer to kind of use in general i think that kind of leads me to my next thing which is battery life and having that amoled display hasn't severely dented the battery life and I thought in the way that I thought it would and I think it's it's almost done better than some of the other um, garments that have those AMOLED displays particularly when you're using them always on so the venues and the epics it goes a lot longer I think you can potentially can get a, you know a full week with a regular amount of training if you don't use it always on display you know you can get more than a week and out of it as well so it can push things further and you're not i think you're making certain sacrifices in some areas in terms of battery life but i think the key ones you're not and i think that's really important here you know i think you're getting very good battery life all with having that kind of um extra kind of splash of color in that display as well um and the other thing for me is i think generally my run tracking experience has just been very solid for me. I think in the multiband GPS mode, I think for me, it's kind of along with the kind of epics and the Phoenix is the kind of best kind of, of that kind of new kind of GPS mode that we're seeing in, in watches in general. That is the most consistent experience that I've had, uh, you know, with the 965 and those other kind of high end Garmin watches. Um, I think generally that analysis you're getting there, you know, things like training readiness, I think are really nice features. I know you get that on 955, but I think, you know, as a bit of a guidance in terms of what you should do um, on top of, you know, the other kind of bits of information you're getting, I think that's really solid as well. And then obviously you're getting some of those, if you care about those kind of advanced running dynamics, you're getting some of those pulled in without having to use the kind of additional sensor, which I think is nice if you want a little bit more data. And when I've kind of tested it against Garmin's own kind of, um, uh, HRM Pro Plus, which offers those kind of advanced running metrics, the data is generally kind of matched up. So, you know, if you, you feel very uh, reliant on that kind of information and some of the kind of other sensors that can deliver that information, then I think, and you want those extra metrics and that's there as well. So yeah, a lot of good things. Ultimately, it's the AMOLED display there that's really gonna separate these things. But I think ultimately your battery life is not suffering. And I think the run tracking experience is not suffering either because of it. Um, and yeah, overall, I think you're getting a very, good experience um, running with the 4 and a 965. So things I don't love, and we're nitpicking here, but really this watch is the 955 with a facelift. It's the same watch underneath. If you, if you forget about the screen, which you shouldn't forget about the screen because it's the main reason you'd buy this watch is for the screen, but it is the same watch. And I feel like that's a little bit disappointing. I, I don't know whether the screen is enough to persuade you to upgrade right now. Obviously Garmin is super good at rolling out new software features across their, the watches. So they don't want, you know, they're not expecting you to buy a new watch every nine months. Who would do that? But I kind of feel like there's not a lot that's new other than the screen. And the last thing, and this is a huge, a huge bugbear I have with every Garmin watch, not just the 965 is that considering 50% probably, maybe I'm guessing, 50% of the people that buy watches are female, it's a bugbear for me that you have to 
download the cycle tracking app onto it's not just on the watch i feel like it should always just be on a watch and all you have to do is go onto your garmin connect put in your dates and it's just on your watch and it gives you tips on you know where you are in your cycle and how you should be training that day you can do that on the watch but you have to kind of jump through a hoop of downloading the widget and then syncing it up and it i mean it doesn't take long again i'm nitpicking but i just wish considering you know considering most a lot of the people that buy garments would use that feature why is it not just on there and then you have the chance to remove it because for me it just feels like another thing to set up when you're trying to set up your watch and then do you actually set it up or do you just never realize it, it it's a really good tool that women should use and there's you know there's menstrual tracking there's pregnancy tracking garmin have put a lot of effort into this so just put it on the watch don't don't make people download another thing dislikes are pretty minor for me with this watch like talk more about pricing though that's probably the big thing that's going to be a, a consideration with the watch but in terms of actually things that i don't like that much in the watch one is that the band isn't a proper quick release band uh, it's one of those little sprung ones you kind of have to get a fingernail in to poke it out um, and that's a bit annoying but not really a big deal once you do put a quick release band on it if you have them then obviously it's easy to take them on and off uh, the other one is the heart rate accuracy and this isn't a really severe dislike it's about par for the course for an optical heart rate monitor maybe even slightly above par most of the time it's going to be fine you can probably judge most of your runs using the optical heart rate sensor on the watch but occasionally it is going to go wrong it's going to skew your analysis for that run or make it harder for you to judge your effort on the run and then skew your overall training analysis on the watch including readiness so i did pair a chest strap for this watch after a few runs just because after a couple of little errors and one big error it just it starts to make you doubt it and i do use heart rate in my training and i did want to really test the training analysis features with accurate data so yeah that's it's a just like i have with pretty much all watches of optical heart rate sensors that you still need to pair an optical heart rate monitor no matter how expensive and great the watch ends up it's still never perfect on that heart rate tracking okay so into the band and i can't say there's anything that i really hated about living with the 40965 but i think ultimately you have to look at it in terms of how it compares to what we got on the 955 I think the first thing for me really is that feature set wise, it's not that hugely different from the um, the 955. So if you were looking for a kind of big upgrade on that front, then I don't think you're really getting that here. So, you know, that would probably be a thing I think, you know, that's not fantastic, but it's not something I've hated the fact over, you know, that we're getting that with the 965. I think during the heart rate monitoring performance, the wrist-based heart rate monitoring performance, it's kind of what I've seen with kind of those bigger case Garmin watches anyway, that it can be a little bit spotty and consistent in terms of kind of high intensity stuff. Um, and I've had a much, I have a much better experience with the kind of smaller case Garmin watches in general, but ultimately I would be wearing a heart rate monitor chest strap and that's kind of what I would be suggesting anyway. If you look at the battery numbers, there are some drop-offs in areas. I think you're maybe getting a little bit less in that kind of multi-band mode, but I don't think it's the kind of difference in those kind of battery numbers, which really, um, affects what you know the experience that i've got or the you know the time i've got to use of these but ultimately there is some differences in terms of those battery life numbers and if you were someone that really cared about that and you you know you really were wanted that kind of top level battery performance then maybe you're getting a little bit more on the 955 but ultimately in most areas i think you know it's not a massive difference in terms of getting it so yeah not massive things to ha you know really say they were bad about the 965 but i think ultimately if you compare it to what you get on the previous watch then there's maybe reasons to say well maybe i don't need to go for the latest forerunner watch but we'll get into that in the verdict uh, later on Forerunner 965 is the best watch in Garmin's range now and that really makes it the best sports watch overall because Garmin is so strong compared to the competition when it comes to those high-end features. The AMOLED screen really is a joy to use, the battery life hasn't been hit too severely by it which is very important I think and everything else is top-notch like you'd expect. The sports tracking is excellent, the training analysis is excellent, the maps and navigation features are without a uh, rival within the sports watch world and the design is also a really nice upgrade and on the 955 in terms of the elegance and how enjoyable it is to use and wear all the time while still being a really nice light watch which does differentiate it from the chunkier ones you're getting with things like the Phoenix and Epix watches which might not suit everyone's wrists that well I think even if you are a relatively thin wrist person like myself this is an enjoyable watch to have on I also think it's pretty fairly priced and I think the best way to look at it is almost another option in Garmin's range rather than coming in that's really 
superseding the 4 and a 955. I think now you have this option that's just a little bit more expensive than the 955, but it gives you that AMOLED display and you can take it or leave it. You're getting all the same features on the 955 if you'd rather have a memory and pixel display if you live in a very sunny place, for example, or just want a little bit of extra battery life, then you can get that very easily in Garmin's range for less money. And actually the 4955 is ridiculous value often in sales these days because it is a watch with just everything Garmin has, uh, including maps, the, you know, pretty nice design itself. And it goes for a lot less than the newer watches or the top watches like the Epics and the Enduro. So there's a saving to be made there if you don't want the AMOLED display, certainly. If you do want the AMOLED display, the rival at this top end is the Garmin Epix 2. I do think the 965 is a better watch than the Epix 2. Having loved the Epix 2, I used it as my main watch most of last year. You have to pay so much more on the Epix 2 to get all the same features as in this, including multiband, because it's not available on the uh, base models of the Epix 2. And you are getting nice design in terms of materials, but for day-to-day -day wear, I kind of prefer wearing the 965 because it is lighter. I do like the way it looks on the front. I don't need that huge metal bezel myself. Uh, I still think this is a nice looking watch. And it's got a couple of days of extra battery life compared to the Epix. So yeah, if you were looking at the Epix, I would now be looking at a 965 making a nice saving as well. <laughs> then there are still obviously the Phoenix and the Enduro there, which have those features in chunkier watches with massive battery lives. If you need the battery life, those watches are available. I think probably the biggest choice maybe to make in Garmin's range is against the Forerunner 265, which also has the AMOLED display, came out this year, has most of the same features as this watch. Probably the big ones that it's missing compared to the 965 are maps in particular. It's got a slightly less battery life. The Forerunner 265 lasted me four to five days on a charge. And it's also just got an all plastic design, a more classic Forerunner design that isn't quite as nice looking uh, as the 965. It's a fair bit less. Uh, I think the maps is the big feature that differentiates the two watches because um, you know if you need those maps or are really going to enjoy using those maps and get the most out of them. You still get breadcrumb navigation on the 400 265 and for my money, if I was buying one right now, I would buy the 265 over the 965 because I don't think I'm going to make use of the maps in particular on the watch and the battery life is sufficient on the 265 and although I much prefer the look of the 965, it's not a bad looking watch the 265. So I think that's the most compelling alternative option in Garmin's range. If you want an AMOLED screen and really good sports tracking, the 265 is coming in a fair bit cheaper and it is doing pretty much the same job as the 965. It's just as accurate for sure uh, in terms of GPS tracking and other stuff. I tested them side by side for a fair while and yeah, I have no concerns about that as on the 265. It's just not doesn't have, doesn't have the maps, doesn't have the same battery life and doesn't look quite as good. I think one watch that definitely suffers from the arrival of the 965 is the Apple Watch Ultra. The 965 is still not a full smartwatch. It doesn't have the Apple Watch's app store. It's not quite as enjoyable to use day to day and it's useful to use day to day, but the gap is closing. This is a really nice looking watch. I think some people would just simply straight up prefer the design of the 965 compared to the Apple Watch Ultra. Um, and it's just better in terms of native sports tracking. Uh, the navigation feature is certainly better. There's no training analysis on the Apple Watch Ultra and there's loads on this watch. Battery life is obviously significantly better on the 965 as well. The Ultra comes in at two days. It feels very much like a big response to the Apple Watch Ultra, the 965. And then you've got a fantastic looking watch with a bright screen still offering all of Garmin's core features and lasting a lot longer than the Apple Watch Ultra does. So this is still not a full smartwatch in terms of not having a very good app store and stuff like that, but it certainly has massively closed the gap in the joy of use between workouts uh, that you have with the Apple Watch Ultra, which is a really nice watch to have on day to day, but the 965 is pretty much as good and then it does give you that big upgrade in a lot of other areas. So my verdict on the Garmin 4965 is that I have really enjoyed using this watch, you know, and this is coming from someone that has used the 935, 945 and 955 long term. I know this is probably Garmin's top running watch in general anyway, and I think that addition of the AMOLED display does make it a really nice watch to live with, along with getting that really strong run tracking performance as well. Now, one way to look at it is that is it a huge upgrade on the 955 outside of that? It isn't. So from that point of view, if you're not fussed about AMOLED display, I would say go for the 955. It's cheaper. It's got all the same features. It's going to give you the same level of performance. It's probably going to get you a little bit more battery life as well too. Now Nick has kind of done a good job of kind of comparing how it kind of sits with the rest of the going range. I kind of want to look at it from the point of where does this watch sit with other watch brands? So things like Coros and Polar. And from the Coros point of view, this price point sits between the Apex 2 and the Vertex 2. And for me personally, if I wanted a pure kind of running watch feature at this price with the level of features and the design, I would still probably be going for the 4 and the 965, um, generally in terms of what I've experienced in those other watches. And then from a kind of polar point of view, you've got things like the Vantage V2 and the uh, Gritex Pro. Again, you know, this, those two watches kind of sit around the same price 
as the Garmin 4965. And again, I think from a design point of view, I think from a battery life point of view as well, despite you having that um, always on AMOLED display, the kind of the running features that you're getting on the Forerunner 965 as well, when you look at it as a package compared to those Polar watches, I just think it feels like a more polished running watch in general. Um, that's not to say that those watches are bad watches, but I think in terms of the experience that I've had on this watch, I had those those watches, those Coros and those uh, Polar watches kind of kind of there on in front of me alongside the 4965. I know which one I would probably pick for to go out for a run with, and it would be the 4965 without a shadow of a doubt. So for me, in comparison to how it sits in the you know in the price range of other kind of top end running watches. I think the 4965 feels like the top option at the moment. Um, my experience has been very, very good. A watch I'd have no qualms wearing long term for tracking my runs and the level of runs that I do. Um, and yeah, I think AMOLED display added. I think this makes the Garmin 4965 a really nice watch to own and a nice watch to own when you're not running as well too. I think this is an excellent watch. It was the watch I picked considering I have review watches it was the watch i reached for to do the marathon at the weekend i do really like it i am really impressed with it i've run with this more than my phoenix at the moment i think if you're not if you if you own the 955 or a phoenix it's probably not worth upgrading there's not much new on it if you love the screen but you don't have the budget i'd buy the 265 i think it comes in two different it comes in two different sizes. You've got more kind of options with what you have on your wrist. The only real difference, to be honest, between the 265 and the 295 is the mapping. This has more mapping capabilities and it's bigger. But if you're not, if you're never going to go skiing and want to download the map on your wrist, or you're never going trail running for an, you know, and want maps on your wrist, go for the 265 because it will save you money. That said, it's an excellent watch. And if you're looking for kind of that high end, does everything, this is a great watch to buy, but it is, it is a higher price point. And if you can't afford it, you'll get everything you need and more from the 265. Okay, so there you have it. That is our take on the Garmin 4Runner 965. Now, if you've got any questions about this watch that we haven't covered in this video, do let us know in the comments. If there are other watches you want to find out how the 4Runner 965 compares to, let us know about that as well too. As always, like and subscribe, hit that little bell to find out about our latest videos, and yeah, we'll see you for the next Run Tester video.